Do these, uh, do these arrows satisfy the as close as possible? This arrow here is fine. What type of arrow is this? Well, it's taking a pi bond and trying to make another pi bond. Pi bond to pi bond. But is this the closest that we could put the pi bond to the original pi bond? Well, no. Theoretically, the closer place to put the pi bond would be here. So this is a bad arrowhead because it's putting the pi bond, the new pi bond, too far away from the original pi bond. Um, it would be closer if we could put the new pi bond over here. So that was wrong. This is an arrow that satisfies the as close as possible rule, because this would be putting the new pi bond as close as possible to the old pi bond. So this does satisfy um, the as close as possible rule. Now, you might have noticed that this is illegal for other reasons. This is still illegal because this atom here is just not a candidate for resonance. Because this atom is just not a candidate for resonance, um, we really should not be putting a pi bond here um, either. Um, so just because uh, um, we're putting something as close as possible doesn't mean that we can't be rejecting it for some other reason. Uh, remember, we're just looking at one reason to reject um, bonds. So um, we would have to reject this arrow um, because um, theoretically we could imagine putting the pi bond closer. Now, um, so notice that when we say that we want to put it, uh, we want to reject anything that's not as close as possible, we mean we want to reject anything that's not kind of theoretically as close as possible. Theoretically, it would be closer to put the new pi bond over here. It turns out that for other reasons we can't really do that, but that's no excuse for putting the pi bond on the right region over here. So I'll say that one more time. Um, we want to reject this because theoretically we can imagine putting the pi bond closer to the original pi bond. We can imagine putting the new pi bond over here and that would be closer. Now it turns out that there's other reasons why we can't put the new pi bond in this uh, position either, but that still doesn't stop it from being the case that this arrow is violating the as close as possible rule. We, d we definitely can't put the pi bond here uh, because theoretically there would be a closer position for the pi bond over here. So this arrow does not violate the as close as possible principle. It turns out that it's wrong for other reasons, but at least it would be putting the, the pi bond in the place that's theoretically as close as possible. Uh, is this arrow satisfying the as close as possible rule? Now we're taking a pi bond and making it into a lone pair. Taking a pi bond and making it into a lone pair. Is this lone pair as close as is possible to the original pi bond? No. It would be closer to just put the lone pair on one of the atoms that was sharing the original pi bond. So this um, arrow out here is wrong, it's putting the lone pair too far away from the original pi bond. It would be better to put the lone pair over here, or on this card. So now this does satisfy the as close as possible rule. It turns out that this would not give us a very significant resonance structure, but at least we'd be making an arrow um, that's giving us a transition that's as close as possible to the original pi bond. Does this arrow satisfy the as close as possible rule? Well, now we're taking a pi bond and making another pi bond. And this pi, new pi bond really is as close as possible to the original pi bond. Um, you couldn't get any closer because this carbon was sharing the original pi bond and it's going to be sharing the new pi bond as well. So this arrow definitely satisfies the as close as possible rule. So this arrow is good. That's a good arrow. How could we have screwed that up? What would be a bad arrow? Well, if we tried to put the pi bond over here, that would not be as close as possible. So that would be wrong. But this is a good, as close as possible error. Check these arrows to make sure that they're each satisfying the as close as possible principle. This arrow up here is fine. We're taking a pi bond and making it into a lone pair that's as close as possible to the original pi bond. But what about this lower arrow? What type of arrow is this? Well, the tail is on a negative charge. That means we're moving a lone pair, and the head here is pointing at a bond, so we're taking a lone pair and making a pi bond. 
So now we're focusing on the load pair to pi bond transition. So what do we have to check? We have to check whether the new pi bond is as close as possible to the original lone pair. Is the new pi bond as close as possible to the original lone pair? No, it's not. Uh, we're taking this pi bond and moving it all the way over here to a new pi bond. How could we, where could we put it that would be closer? Well, if we put the pi bond here, that would clearly be closer to the original lone pair. Uh, because this nitrogen owns this lone pair, and if we put the pi bond in this location, the nitrogen would at least still be sharing the pi bond. So this is the correct as close as possible arrow. And the original arrow, this arrow, violates the as close as possible rule. So now I'll erase that. That would be an incorrect arrow. This would be an arrow that would be placing uh, the lone pair into a pi bond that's as close as possible to the original lone pair. So this would be correct. Of course, if we wanted, We could also move the lone pair and put it down here. This is another location with the pi bond that's as close as possible to the original lone pair. So putting a pi bond either down here or up here would be fine.